I described you as a liberal, like Barry, a, a pretty liberal going into the New York Times, probably dream job until it wasn't. So what, what happened? It was the only dream job I could ever have imagined. I mean, um, growing up, getting on the front page of the Times was literally my singular aspiration. I used to look up the names of the reporters and look and see how they'd gotten there, read their whole career trajectory. Um, and honestly, for a few years of the Times, I had an amazing time. And I had a lot of great editors who were wonderful. Um, basically, what happened with me was not quite as dramatic as what happened with Bear. It was, it was that as 2020 came and as the sort of boundaries for what was allowed to be reported on got tighter and tighter, I started to feel very constricted in where my curiosity could lead. And I was a, I started as a business reporter. I was kind of a free ranging features reporter. Um, and I couldn't cover a lot of the most interesting stuff. Editors were kind of making that very difficult. And um, my colleagues were making that very difficult when I tried to cover things um, such as like, you know, the most interesting stuff that was going on that year, like Chaz, Chop, whatever you want to call it in Seattle, um, where a group of Antifa activists took over the gayborhood, a gay neighborhood of Seattle and, and declared it an autonomous zone. I like gayborhood. Um, is that a new, is that a new term? I like gayborhood. That works. <laughs> only, only for internal gay use. Um, but <laughs> I got it. I, I found basically I wasn't allowed to write about a lot of things I was really curious about writing about. And so that was happening. Then when I was with Bear, obviously I started getting kind of treated like a not cool kid in high school or something, which was hard because I was always cool in high school. And, <laughs> um, and then Bear started the Substack. We started it on a flight. She had been kind of, uh, she had quit. She was wandering around the house, not sure what to do. And, um, I opened up this thing, Substack, and I was like, you got to just start writing here. And and then she started having a lot of fun on it. And it was a hit and it was growing and it was making more money than she had made at the Times, then twice as much money she was made at the Times. And, and it was like, there was a lot of interest, there was traffic. And um, honestly, like part of me quit the Times because I was frustrated with what was going on. But I had a really good experience there in a lot of ways. I loved my bosses and stuff. And But part of me quit because there was a lot more fun in the new world. Like you said, what David mm -hmm. was saying, the new world is really exciting and positive and it felt fun and it felt like happy and exuberant. And I was so thrilled to be part of that. And so I quit and I joined and, and trying to explain to my parents why I was quitting the New York Times to join barryweiss.substack.com was... Um, <laughs> was a little bit crazy but but they they came around and and then yeah now now we've kind of made it into a little media company yeah that, and growing by the day so growing it wasn't all um you know a, a ball of roses unfortunately because i know you had said early on maybe it was 2021 it was shortly after you left that some of the colleagues at the times decided it might be a fun thing to leak negative stories about you that yeah. they were taking aim at you. Now, was that because of ideology, because they saw you covering stories like Chaz that they didn't want you covering? Or was that because the link to Barry, who they already saw as controversial? It was a mix. But basically, as soon as you cross whatever the sort of red line that that this world has put up, as soon as you are are exposed to anything even slightly ideologically off kilter or just not exactly in line with whatever the line of the day is, um, you become a real target. And and so, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm some great victim in this. Like it, uh, but yeah, it was nasty and bullying. And um, well, can you can you expand on that though? What do you mean? Like what what was your alleged sin, and how did you feel the blowback? The alleged sin was curiosity about the wrong things. So I wanted to cover um, the financial ramifications of some of the protests in a town called Kenosha, where- Yeah, the, I remember this reporting. Yeah, where like the minority owned businesses of the poor neighborhood had been completely burned and destroyed and they were all underinsured and they were, kind of begging for attention and begging for people to care about what was going on. Of course, the wealthier area of town had boarded up their windows and had proper insurance and were totally fine. Anyway, so I pitched this story and wanted to go because as a business reporter, that seemed really reasonable. 
And um, basically the story was held until after the election. It was just, I realized that politics were mm. coming into my work in a way that felt really uncomfortable and that felt um, inappropriate and weird and not just not right. And then, the, the honestly, but also the interpersonal stuff is just as much an issue as the actual work stuff, right? Like, you don't want to work somewhere where people are mean to you. and like. So their actual talk. opinions of you changed to where they were treating you differently. Yeah. People would call me a fascist on Twitter or like... Colleagues? I mean, again, of course. <laughs> I, but this is... You know this stuff. You know this is what happens. No, I have only ever worked with the most delightful, supportive people. I don't know what you are talking about. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah, people were bad. I, uh, I remember this one editor. There was just sort of a drumbeat that, like, that, like, I was going to be smeared in some way, and I got a note about how. I had a white gaze from an editor that that my whiteness was imbuing my work and all this stuff. And I just had this feeling of like, oh God. And then the Donald McNeil stuff happened. I don't know if you remember that, that when that amazing science reporter um, was smeared for having years ago on a trip with kids, um, yeah. repeat the N-word to, back to some kids after they asked him about the use of the N word, and he asked them for the context of it. Whatever, it was like an insane moment. It and just, he had been it was right just that he uttered it. He uttered yeah, it. Exactly. It wasn't even like he was using it. He was repeating a story in which it was used. Exactly. And he'd been punished for for doing so, and that was probably the right thing and all that. But this was dredged back up then in that moment and used to kind of drumbeat him out of the times and, and to smear him as a racist and as someone who had used the N word as, as though he'd like yelled it at someone. And I just was watching that and watching this career Times reporter be smeared in that way, in a way that is so humiliating and so, um, I mean, humiliating in like a Broadway for his life, like his kids. Like, it's like, it's embarrassing. And I was like, I don't want to hang out and wait around until some folks figure out how to do that to me. Like, I better go out Mm -hmm. with my head up at least. I'll tell you who the unsung heroes of COVID are. Of course, the frontline workers. But what about those business owners who hung in there and paid their employees during the pandemic? If you stayed open and paid your people, you could be eligible for up to $26,000 per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. $26,000 per employee. This is not a loan. These are government funds that you don't have to pay back. All types of businesses, including nonprofits and churches, can be eligible. But you need to apply now because Congress may pull the funds. COVIDtaxrelief.org has helped tens of thousands of businesses just like yours and secured over $500 million. And unlike others, they charge nothing, absolutely nothing, up front. They do all the work, then share a percentage of the cash they get for you. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Now let COVIDtaxrelief.org help you get up to $26,000 per employee. Visit COVIDtaxrelief.org. 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 Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.